Howdy folks, good afternoon. It's Memorial Day, May 28th, 2012. I'm Skip Ruddertail, your Otter Editor. With me as always is... Toons is, I guess, the, um, the uh, chauffeured cat. The chauffeured cat? The cat who could get who could a ride in a car. And this is the Bad Dog Book Club. Mm -hmm. Happy to see y'all. Mm -hmm. We got a quickie story this week. A good 18 plus it, story. Yeah, good 18 plus story. I did, yes... As Glad always. to have those. Yes. And but it's, it's the first time we've had... You're always doing the counting. Mm -hmm. How many episodes is this? This is 30. 30. So I guess it means one thirtieth of our nature is heterosexual uh, this far into the show. Because this is our first male-female pulp no, story, it is. isn't it? No, it's not. Which... Wasn't it? Which, what was no. It? What, what I don't know. Do? I have to look, but we've done ones before. Because I, I could remember at one we were promising our very first, you our very first male female story, and then they didn't get switched the last minute. I think we've had bisexual. We have yes. stories. Yes. But this has been, I think, the first. I don't think so. Well, I guess we see where my memory goes, right? Right. <laughs> we'll have to. We'll have to. It's certainly not common. All right. Not common. Well, yes. One more for old times' sake. We I guess it's kind of it. appropriate. Yeah. You know, I guess for our. Uh, I don't know. I, we got, you know, uh, Andrew uh, sent this in. Uh, they recorded it and did a nice job. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I think, you know, this is a this is a straight story, but I think Toonses can appreciate it. Mm, I think, yeah, I, I did appreciate it. It was um no, you didn't. the thing I wanted to talk about this because I, I recruit. You know, okay. I think that there are a lot more straight fellas out there that are gayer than they suspect or admit. So, fuck it, I recruit. But I will admit that I'm at least a little bit straighter than I let on as well. Oh, really? So, oh, really? Oh, really, yeah, it's true. I think... It's true. I want to hear about this. <laughs> I think, well, you know, you, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to dismiss uh, the Kinsey scale because it makes sense that, you know, not everybody's binary. It's not like you're straight or you're gay. It's kind of a somewhere in between, but I still think it gets kind of rounded off at the edges. So if you're uh, a, a straight person who has maybe just, let's just use a number, 5% homosexual inclination, do you think that 5% is anything near significant enough to surface in a culture that kind of requires you to, you know, want to be 100% gay before you want to start coming out? I mean, there are people who in this culture uh, couldn't be any less flamboyant and uh, uh, ambitious in their drive for dick, but still feel compelled to keep it completely secret and put on a straight a straight face, so yep. to speak. Yep. And I'll, I'll, I'll admit as much that I kind of do the same thing from a queer perspective, and I say I'm a lot gayer than I am because it's funny and mm -hmm. it, it kind of avoids the confusion of people who oftentimes want to assert I'm much more straight than I am. Yeah. Just because I might say, oh, yeah, technically I'm bisexual because it's not beyond my fantasy to imagine a lady. Right. You know? But it's pushing it. It's just, I'm just saying, like, it... it I see how it works from my perspective, uh -huh. where I don't want to be going to telling everybody, oh, I'm bisexual, I'm bisexual, when I have, like, no, like, real interest or, or, or uh, mm -hmm. envision, I don't want to envision myself with a lady in the future, mm -hmm. it's just something that would be, like, um, it would be a, a lottery ticket um, mun uh, muff muncher, basically. <laughs> you ever heard that, heard that from a, a, no, a lottery, lottery ticket cocksucker? No. Basically, if you were to hit every number on the Powerball, except just think about these being the conditions necessary for a guy to finally just want to suck a cock. You know? Okay. okay. Uh, he, he's been out of a relationship with a lady for a long time. Um, he ends up at the wrong bar, but doesn't quite realize it at first. You know, mm -hmm. just these conditions that were maybe would just be consecutively met. He just runs into the guy that reminds him of the, uh, the one boy he crushed on back mm -hmm. in college. You know, just these conditions that were met. He'd suck a cock and not feel that guilty about it, not feel like he'd have to come out of the closet in the next morning. Uh -huh. And I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe there's my lottery ticket somewhere there's deep inside somewhere me. Somewhere out there. Yeah, there's the my lottery ticket. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the lady for me. I'm not expecting my number to so, come up anytime soon. So ladies soon. who are listeners, <laughs> there is still a chance for you to get with the Ladies, chances. please, I'm taken. It's, it's legal in my district. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm saying the marriage. I'm just saying I don't want him to give up hope. No, I, I just think it's, this is this is a, a, as as appropriate a story as any to admit it. I'm, yeah, I'm technically bisexual, I, I but agree. you know, I guess that's why well, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm 
I think, a lot more by than you are. But you were enjoying the story visibly about. while we were listening. We were like out. We were like on the um. We were out in this little private area, like in a little grassy area, um, mm-hmm. on a blanket, listening to this story, and Skip mm-hmm. was enjoying it. And I, I was scandalized when he was enjoying it in the car. <laughs> Looking around like, oh, jeez, I'm, I'm not. I mean, you make it sound like I'm whacking off. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not. You're not. It's, just, it's to, visible. You have I to, had you to, to adjust himself. Readjust in my pants, <laughs> but I wasn't like down there for more than a couple no. seconds. It's not like we, we weren't like in the bushes of the local park. Although right. it's, it's fun to make it sound like that. Yeah, that's apparently yes. <laughs> yes, but just yes. to make Skip blush about it. Yes, because I'm blushing while it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, oh no, I'm scandalized. No, but you're definitely a lot straighter than I am. I was telling um mm-hmm. your partner Bun like my standard for it's not like my standard for heterosexuality, but I was mm-hmm. talking about just like I know straight guys who kind of like they, they 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 express fantasies about hooking up with a feller, but if you ever get into a deeper conversation about them, the only thing they really want is a family with a a, a lady and like a genetic offspring essentially. Mm-hmm. And I think if your compulsion toward heterosexual Activity is that strong and that central to your life. Mm-hmm. It's not going to bug me if you're going to say, oh, I'm straight and not go, oh, I'm bi. Yeah. Like, I really hope that nobody would, you know, call me on the street and go, no, you said you like ladies kind of, sort of, a little bit, just kind of. You have to say you're bisexual. Right, right. Like, come on, man. Like, just well, relax. That, I mean, we've touched on it before, the weird place that bisexuality has or doesn't have in our culture. Where people say it doesn't exist. Right, and like, yeah, and on both sides. And it's <laughs> like... Well, and it, and what I say, you know, what I say to people, and I had somebody ask me about this one time, is, you know, well, yes, I'm bisexual. Culturally, I'm gay. Culturally, I'm gay. Culturally, yeah. I'm gay. It's about what I'm saying, too, Because that's, you know, more, you know, that's a, I'm with a guy, you know, and so I'm, you know, concerned about those issues. And, you know, a lot of my friends are gay, um, you know, probably at least half. And, you know, so I, there are all these other factors, and that there really isn't much of a bi culture, um, I would argue. No, there really isn't. In the U.S., be, you know, because it's kind of marginalized, I think, by both camps. So, you know, I could say, yes, it's like I'm, the modern I'm, Republicans I'm bisexual. I'm probably like a 75 25 or something, or an 80 20, you know, something like that, gay to the straight. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely on the gay side, and so culturally, I've decided I'm gay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's imp- it's one of these things that we can, you know, we've talked about this before, that the desire and action and social realm are all different things. You know, right. And, and, and what you cho- who you choose to associate with or what you associate yourself as are different things um, for a lot of folks. And that's okay. So clearly you like the story, and I like the story too. I like the story. Mm-hmm. I, I, what I really liked about this story was it told a um, kind of subby dommy story that mm-hmm. wasn't just so um, contrived to be the dominant satisfying the submissive, which is right. I think it really kind of a trap when you think about it when you're when mm-hmm. you're coming to this kind of writing because that's what you want to happen right. theoretically and it's kind of like giving it a happy ending. But in this story, I think what is, is prominent is at first I was kind of confused because she seemed kind of dominant herself mm-hmm. and she was like seemed like she was manipulating him. Mm-hmm. So like, oh, I'm going to go back and use him for a booty call, kind of. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm I'm controlling him. She yeah. more or less alludes to, but then as it progresses on, she's talking about how his actions are kind of making her feel more submissive. Right. And she's appreciating that, right. and I guess even to the very end where she's saying she almost got put into subspace, except that he pulled back at the last second. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what I think is cool about this story, which is ultimately a story about a like former relationship is being mm-hmm. kind of revisited on, is it expresses in the end kind of why there was that, that that kind of failure, that ultimate connection, and there just wasn't that last, you know, bridge that was met. He just couldn't put her in subspace, really. Well, I don't know if that you know was the issue. I, see, we don't really find out why they broke up. And well, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm kind of extrapolating. But, but I, I mean, I feel like I it's like more like it. sexually they're really compatible, but they aren't compatible otherwise. They're compatible, and, they're compatible through familiarity, and that's what yeah. I kind of liked about it, was she yeah. expressed how... She had gotten to kind of train him to mm-hmm. know how to satisfy her needs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, which apparently she expresses as being submissive, like mm-hmm. she, to satisfy her submissive needs, even though the mm-hmm. process of what she's doing is obviously more like a d- dynamic, assertive Well, I th- that's I mean, one of the things I loved about it, because, action. right, you, as you said, normally when we read 
you know, Dom sub stories. They're they follow And certainly when the, I write them, they by the follow way. Yeah, the I fall into this every time. Mental script of how the how we ideally imagine things work, you know, so the Dom is super Dom and just knows exactly what to do to do and mm-hmm. the submissive just, you know, takes it or whatever. It really and, is an explicit fantasy. And, and this is kind of like explicit reality. In, right, in it. reality, and I think if you talk to any good sub, you know, they they're, they have, they know how to push the buttons just like she did. Yeah. You know, they know how to get you know, they know how to at least start things and get the action they want mm-hmm. out of their top. Topping from the bottom. Yeah, but it isn't that. I mean, it's it's more like, I think it was more like, you know, here are the conditions that I'm going to, you know, set up to get what I want. It's like having an understanding of reverse engineering. It's like pushing, it's like pushing the, you know, it's like giving the boulder the push at the top of the hill. <laughs> and the boulder's going to roll down the hill. That's what you want, but you give it the little It's like start. that Wiley, Wiley E. Coyote thing where it rolls up like a, a comically curved canyon and then back <laughs> up and smashes you in the head. If well, that <laughs> happens sometimes too. Yeah, yeah. That's good. But no, I, I think, and I think that's very true to life. Um, and... Well, I mean, you made a little comment last night when Bud and I were, you know, sitting on the couch, and, and you know, he was like, "Wow, you just, you just persuaded him that easily." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no. <laughs> they were um, kind of dirty though, talking, is what Skip's saying. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you know, I was hoping to get some later on in the evening, and, and uh, but you know, it's, <laughs> and I'm the top in this shameless. case, of course. Well, Skip's but, shameless is the is the truth of it. But, you know, I mean, it is, you know, especially when you know the other person well, as these two people obviously do, you mm-hmm. know the little things to, you know, push them one way or the other. And it starts reading a lot <laughs> over more the like edge, a, And I think the story really did that, captured that well. It starts reading a lot more like a conversation than like an interaction, which is another kind of cool thing about the story is that the characters obviously have a history. So it seems a lot more like they're. I don't want to say like, like conversing versus like conversing versus interacting. I mean, they they know what what how to respond to each other. Mm-hmm. It's not just a random interaction. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, I I agree. I mean, I, I, it it was very. You know, we read a lot of, and we've talked about this, and it, partially because it's what I like. You know, we read a lot of sci-fi and fantasy stories mm-hmm. and out there as and adventures. And, and that's stuff. so much and of the this furry is very, stuff. This is extremely realistic. In a lot of ways, yeah, it's just a booty so call. That's what I love about it. Yeah, and it's, it's very simple, call. right? It's very realistic, but it's very simple, and it works. And I have to imagine it's a very universal story. Yeah, because how many how many post relationship booty calls mm-hmm. do you think exist in the world just on mm-hmm. today? Just today, like mm-hmm. give X a number. Do I really have to? I think yeah. can't we just leave it as a rhetorical? You're, you're question? The, uh, I don't want to answer the rhetorical question. You're the because uh, it's a rhetorical <laughs> question. I just want to challenge you because you're the one that's always the uh, the God. genius. Yeah, I <laughs> I'd just be really impressed if you could pull somewhere a figure be- out of some somewhere rationing, between rationality. three and eight billion. <laughs> 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 that's my guess. Uh, the one thing that did not work for me in the story, and which I was a little bit worried about at first, I confess, uh, was the first paragraph or two, where it starts it's out blown. with, it is hard for exes to hang out with it being a little awkward. Even the cleanest of breakups is still a breakup. You can't avoid that bit of tension when you see someone who you shared a bed with for years. Still, though, all that, all that, this now separated couple manages to enjoy each other's company, sometimes way more than they should. <laughs> it's very, it's, it's all of a sudden, the, or I shouldn't say all of a sudden because it's the start of the story, but we the story started off by this weird narration that kind of sets things up, and I don't think it's needed it for the story. Like the back- I think it can be cut out. It serves an obvious purpose, but it reads like the back cover synopsis. Right. Or it reads like uh, if you're watching like a movie on MST3K which is not very well assembled. And they have, you know, I, as I said to Bun, a random narrator throughout <laughs> a, a movie is very often a really good sign of a really bad movie. <laughs> oh, well, because they aren't able to string things together. But And this starts out, and I was like, uh-oh, is this going to be one of those cases? But basically, after the first couple paragraphs 
um, we really leave that behind. And they don't come back to it again. Or Liddell doesn't come back to it again. So I think that it kind of it kind of made me nervous when I first I started reading that. it. At, at, at the very first, it was just it was very blunt and just right. uh, direct. And like like uh, what was the descriptor for like a, a, a late thirties raccoon early 30s or an raccoon, early thirties raccoon? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it, it re- uh, kind of like just like a, a singles ad or something. It's a weird little right. I think he said it, it's kind of like this dust jacket synopsis of a story. And I don't think it's necessary. I think Liddell, like, you can just cut that out and probably, you know, re, you know, cut out the first paragraph, re- rework maybe a little bit the second and third to kind of remove this kind of weird narrator voice from the story, which, mm-hmm. as you said, is much more almost like a conversation between these people. And, and right. so I think you can cut that out. You don't need that, and it'll make... It'll flow better with how the story is actually well, constructed. It's obviously just trying to, to, to function as a frame piece, which a lot of stories have. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you, have, you you might need just some kind of frame piece to put things in perspective, but it has to be uh, just a bit more this elegantly simple, implemented this than this. This is a simple story, though, and I don't think you need any kind of frame piece. I think you could... With, That's what with, the, re- as, with though, the tweak so. of a little, a few things, you can we can easily get what's going on. And there's some things you can work into what they're saying. And I think maybe there already are enough things into what they're saying that with that remove see this would be interesting. Now I'd have to go back and somehow erase this from my memory. Um, we do have a bottle of vodka in the other room. <laughs> and and then reread it without the first paragraph and, and try and reconstruct it. But I think that there are enough things worked into the story after that that you don't need any kind of setup, that we can infer fairly quickly and easily what the relationship dynamic of these people is. Or if not, there's there's some very minor tweaks that one could do that we could construct, you know, where they're at um, pretty easily. And I think it would flow better uh, in terms of the rest of the story. To to give just a small piece of advice that would make me grit my teeth and Mm -hmm. have an aneurysm if I heard it. Mm -hmm. Show, don't tell. <laughs> I mean, I it's, your it's, um, it, it's a wanted poster description, which is another thing that would ear, like, make my eyes twitch if I heard mm-hmm. it. it you, you oh, I like you, that phrase. Want, yeah, I heard that in high school. I don't know why school. I haven't heard that, but heard that's really school. good. Wanted poster descriptions are to be avoided. Like, something that would just fit into, like, like something that would just... I, I, like, you don't late want to 30s, encom- five foot seven, you know, and, and it accepts it's a porn story. 7.3 inch dog. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not a sin to have characters that are kind of archetypal, archetypical, I'm sorry mm-hmm. if I'm butchering that word, mm-hmm. the, uh, archetypes themselves that mm-hmm. are, aren't, they're kind of standard to a degree, but you don't want to uh, describe them in that just wholly singular phrase. Right. Like late 30, uh, early 30s raccoon. Right. I mean, if it's yeah. all happening in the same sentence or paragraph, you, I think you it's, usually really got to rethink it. Um, because I, th- this would just be my perspective on it, because then it's very easy for it to sound like a wanted poster description, whereas if you kind of build on the description of the person, maybe a little bit more spread out. Um, and you don't have to, I mean, you're not, you're not casting a film or anything either, too, so they don't have to be, and you don't have to identify this person out of a lineup, you know, so no. you can let... The person you can let the readers Just imagination let the character develop on work. their own, really. Yeah, you don't and need often to force that's it my so favorite. Much. I mean, that's always the disconnect. Sometimes when you see a movie made from a book you've done, where the characters don't look anything like what they should, because you've imagined them a certain way, and that's, that's okay. True. You can let your audience kind of imagine, you know, put the characters together. And truth be told, when I'm writing, I kind of like to play with that, and I will leave things. Mm-hmm vague enough mm-hmm. that I know people can play with it. It throws me when you're reading a furry story and we never find out their species. Unless that's, that's a bit part egregious, of yeah. the construct of the story. And I've seen that pulled off once or twice successfully. But right, if you leave it too open-ended, it might be a little frustrating. Yeah. So it's, it's tr- like most things in life, it's striking a balance. Because, well, it's it's shock. It's kind of um, scandalous just how much I'm really just thinking of humans and then slapping on furry. Mm-hmm. You don't want it to be so obvious that you're really just thinking of people and slapping on the, the, the fur after the, after the fact. Yeah. You want to be gluing it on in patches. <laughs> <laughs> it would look pretty shoddy. Yeah. Um, I was actually talking about this whole descript- physical description thing. I was reading a story on so fur the other day, and it's pretty well written. 
I, I don't mm-hmm. remember who it was by, but it's pretty well written, and I'm enjoying it, and, uh, you know, going along, da 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 And then, right, we get to work into the sex scene, spread out, you know, in separate paragraphs, but we get, like, oh, his cock looked like it was about 8.3 inches. Oh my and goodness, I was like, really? no, no, no. <laughs> what you did you get? Did you measure that. it? Right, exactly. Like you can't say, you can't say it looked like he it was it about, about eight point three <laughs> tenths of an inch or something. <laughs> like you can't do that because who does that? Because you, you can eyeball things to that you know degree of certainty. Yeah, it's yeah. whatever. I mean, I say if you're if you're doing it, looked like you know. I think it's, <laughs> and that may be. It, Basically, you want it this way, I think, is if you're writing a scene where you're in the characters' heads and they're having sex, you want it to be what they would think looking at the person at that moment. So, you know, if I'm getting busy with somebody, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's like 8.3. I'm like, wow, that's really big. Or, wow, that's really big. It must be seven, eight inches. I might do that. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be like... Oh, it's 8.3 inches and, you know, X, you know, 5.2 around. I think it's just cheap because 8.3 isn't very expressive. It's expressive of a point on um, a graph right. of, like, a, 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 a probability or distribution. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's it's hard for that to really speak in, 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 in very loud terms when, you know, people aren't going to be familiar with what that means exactly or they right. won't know how that really translates to the standards of the furry world you've created. Right. It's just not... 8.3 is not as expressive as, like, a, a cop that made your jaw drop. You know? Right. Whatever. It, you want to use words, not numbers, to, yeah. be, to be honest here. I mean, saying, you're a math I guy, but numbers okay just aren't as great as you think. That you can throw numbers in in certain cases, but it's as part of the... Like, only if you could actually imagine your character... Like, saying that, like, wow, he must be, you know, he's huge. He must be eight inches, you know, and you can, if, you know, if they could actually Well, I'm not that. saying, like, avoided entirely either. Right. It's, it's, it's you do, you see, see, you see some stories, and it's, it, that's pretty much all they do to try to explain right. the size is, oh, wow, he, he's huge. He's X number. Right, it's, right. And it's even worse when it's an extremely extravagant number like oh my god he's a ridiculously 13 and a half right. inches and then i'm like okay and then I'm thinking, we're okay, done now what am i supposed to try to do here right like, maybe in this world 27.8 is like the record or something i mean come on now what, what do you want me to do it's like luckily my colon goes up through my store <laughs> in my sternum you know <laughs> this won't be a problem oh, i'm disgusted yeah. now yeah I'm can we sorry. take a break no i need to get a coke no we're almost <laughs> done we're doing good we're doing good, <laughs> folks. We're gonna persevere here. We're gonna All pull right. back out of because this story didn't do that. I was just throwing that no, out there as no. something else I read, but you know, we know he's a big bunny, um, which I like. Guess I like because like the there's a bunny in the story and there's a raccoon in the story, so I figured you would like that. And the raccoon was the lady, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. the raccoon was the lady. But you is know, this, this is raccoon, this a dig? Is this a dig? The raccoon, you know, gets you know muscle fucked and you know come all over her face, and I was <laughs> like, dude, this might like this. Are you saying what I might like or what you would prefer that I would like? Maybe a little of both. <laughs> Maybe a little of both. Because what I thought, what I really appreciated about it was the way she was acting dominantly, even yes. though. She turned out to be more submissive. I don't know. I I, I always more. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I like I said. I think any good submissive is gonna do a lot of the things she did, and I think you know. And and it it's not the role in this ideal constructed sentence is is kind of presented as a one way street, but that's not how a good working dom sub role works. What I'm trying to is say is was... feedback and control from both sides. Wait. What I'm trying to say was this did actually kind of like touch off that sort of submissive uh, vibe, in, vibe you know, in me, but it was yeah. from the guy's perspective because mm-hmm. he was so clearly being kind of manipulated uh-huh, by her. Mm-hmm. And it even, Which is, of course, what the last line was about. Too. Yeah, I, so I thought that was hot. It wasn't hot mm-hmm. because she was trying to get like stuffed up with dick. You know, mm-hmm. I, that that is the bridge I can't really cross because it's, it's a lady. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Sorry, you ladies. You can't relate to being stuffed up with dick. No, but the idea of like a, no, but something like something like the idea of uh, a lady who is dominant toward a feller, mm-hmm. that's kind of tangentially hot to me. So mm-hmm. that's I guess that's like one of the numbers on my on my lottery okay. ticket was gotcha. you know gotcha. a lady who is dominant 
toward guys. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Not even necessarily toward me. Just, I don't know. I appreciate... Yeah. I understand. I appreciate the the um, bravado. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That, this, I guess that's that's, that's, that's just that's the second uh, the, the second ball in my lottery ticket. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. No, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I agree. That's a good one. Um, yeah, you know, and and the story just you know stays nice and playful and light. You know, the 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 way it's written, the style it's written, and suits the style of the story. They mesh really mm-hmm. well together. Yeah. There's always something to look for too, and that can be. I think most of the stories we've featured do that, but occasionally you could read in a story where, like, wow, the tone is really wrong for the theme. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the tone just takes like a turn off, like turn to uh, onto the right shoulder, and you have no idea, like, yeah. what does this person even associate with these concepts? Yeah, that they're apparently so emotionally shattered by getting a blow, <laughs> getting a blowjob after seeing a movie, <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, oh, and he was ravaging my cock. I'm like, oh wow, it just seemed like you guys were yeah. like, oh. <laughs> Two seconds ago. (laughs) (laughs) Awful. You shouldn't be laughing, though. I like that. Um, So, yeah, thank you, Liddell. Uh, You know, enjoyed enjoyed this fun little one. Uh, Do you have anything else to add Mm. today, Jesus? Ladies, you cannot have my number. Oh, I don't. I'll get, give it out. <laughs> if you send me an email, I'll give you his number. I don't want to be tempted too much. Here's the thing: is I don't play the lottery. Uh-huh. That's the whole point of this image: is I don't play the fucking you lottery. Don't trust yourself. I, don't... I see. <laughs> <'Cause> I <laughs> see. He's like, if those numbers come up, I'm going. I'm, 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 I'm calling in. Well, you've heard the story, the stories of the lottery winners, and they just become um, pretty much totally corrupted by the money and like all the um the people so you're around totally them. Totally corrupted by the pussy and and all. Yeah. I guess uh, that's, yeah. that's Tunes' the sad we decline. Can, yeah, we can. <laughs> totally carry this on forever. By the pussy. I was. I just wanted to make, make create an image about uh, uh, lottery ticket cocksuckers. It was good. It was, good. It was for, a good image. <laughs> just to, just to encourage the straight guys that want to suck. Mentally now picturing you being totally corrupted by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that's your fantasy. It's only, it's only a little bit my fantasy. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's mine either. Oh well. Oh well. Um, so yeah, thanks, folks, and uh, as always, you know we're. we're I, I know this is our first, but we are always happy to have you know some more uh, straight porn. And Pirate Stinger, I actually did ask if we wanted to use one of his other stories, so I thought you know we probably will want to you know in in a few episodes do the one yeah. we were originally going to do. Because especially because we we, we, we um, it was a good story too, and we kind of jerked them around a bit too. We did we try to treat them right this time. Yeah. Cause that's how we work. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, be chivalrous. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, I'm crow. Extra lube. Okay. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, uh, with that, uh, I, I will want to say, uh, you know, hope uh, everyone had a good Memorial Day, and uh, um, you know, if you know people in the service, it's a thoughtful Memorial Day, and I just wanted to throw I'll that be out working. there. So yeah, you know, you're you got your new job and mine's still a new new well, job. So. A new 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 job. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I have a good one, and we'll see you next week with a new story. Sure. Ciao. Have a good Archie. <laughs> <laughs>